So we're gonna come to a seated position. Bring your hands onto your knees. And the seated position can be like this or it can be any other seated position that's comfortable for you, maybe with a cushion underneath and maybe on your knees. Any seated position that feels right for you right now. We're in our seated pose. Breathing deeply, entering your seated meditation. Just coming inwards for a moment, feeling your body, any sensations, any feelings. See how your breathing pattern is right now. If you're breathing shallowly or if you're taking nice, long, deep breaths, which is where we want to get to in our breathing practice. I like to count my breath. It's a really nice tool to use. You can count three seconds on the inhale and three seconds on the exhale or find a number that suits you better, maybe four, four. And the goal is to keep increasing that number with time and practice. So find your number and let's take a couple cycles of those. As you're breathing, make sure your spine is nice and long, your shoulders are open and gliding down your back, chest and heart is open. Slowly open the eyes, see how you're feeling just after a couple cycles of counting your breath. I'm sure it's instantly relaxed, I hope. From here, we'll add a little bit of active breathing to get us energized for our practice today. Pressing onto our knees, we're gonna inhale, bring the chest forward, open the shoulders back, almost like a cat cow in a seated pose. Exhale, push on the knees, arch the back towards the back of the room. And again, inhale forward, exhale, push on the knees, arch the back, bring the chin to chest. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, breathing deeply through the nose. Coming back to center, adding a little bit of movement in the spine here, circling the spine around, doing the same movement of opening and closing the chest. Just adding a circular movement in the spine here. You should feel very watery, connecting to that water-like nature in the body. There's no stiffness, no tension. It's completely releasing into your movement and also connecting your movement to your breath still. Changing direction. Really nice. We'll come back to center. You should feel a rush of energy flowing through your body after those nice active breaths. We're gonna inhale the hands up. Exhale, come towards the right side into a little side bend. Going to warm up the body a bit, warm up all the joints before we enter the more active part of our practice today. In our side bend, make sure you're not just collapsing onto that right shoulder, that it's just there to, as a stand, but we're not really leaning against it. We still have active arms here and our body is reaching up and over. Also make sure that your chest is not in direction of the floor. We wanna open that chest up towards the front, towards the sky, looking up towards your left hand, feeling completely open, feeling this nice deep stretch in the left side of your body, your upper body. And again, make sure that your hips are still on the ground because sometimes when we come towards the side, our left knee and hip will raise up and we'll lose half of the stretch. So make sure your hips are leveled and staying on the ground, and then reach from there. 
Inhale, back to center. Long spines, feeling space in between every vertebrae. And exhale, come toward the other side. Again, covering the notes that we touched upon on the other side, by keeping your hips on the ground, not collapsing in the left shoulder. Open heart. Taking a couple deep breaths here. Inhale back to center. Exhale, we're gonna bring that left hand to our right knee and right hand behind our back, wanting to grab our left thigh. It's okay if it doesn't reach, if it's just behind the back. And we're gonna handle a gentle seated twist here. Look behind you over your right shoulder. And still try to find length in the spine here. Opening the heart forward, maybe you'll be able to turn a little bit more into your twist and get that right hand into that left leg bind here. Inhale back to center. Reaching high, exhale, opposite side, right hand to left knee. Left hand comes behind your back, maybe grabbing the right thigh and look behind you over your left shoulder. Deep breaths into this gentle twist. Every twist you do releases tension from your back. It also works on your digestion system, increasing metabolism. We really love twists. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, release the hands towards the ground. We're going to come to a stretch I really, really love and I hope you love too. It might hurt in the beginning, but with practice, it becomes easier and easier and more fun and amazing. And we're going to sit on our heels here and on our knees. Our knees are together and our feet are together. Make sure your feet aren't opening towards the sides with your heels, that they should be flat and straight up. We're just gonna sit on our heels here. This is called the toe stretch pose. So take a look at your toes for a second, making sure that all your toes are stretched out onto the ground, even the pinky toe is on the ground. And just really let your weight sink onto your heel, coming into a really deep sole of the feet stretch. And this is our base most of the time when we're standing or when we're wearing shoes, we just kind of close it off and don't really pay attention to our feet. So we really love this posture to get deep into this area, work on the health of our ankles and our feet, increasing circulation and flow there. If it's hurting a lot, you can always come forward and work with your weight, coming up and down, or just for a couple more moments, breathing deeply, finding this nice stillness and peace within, always finding this comfortable place within an uncomfortable place. It's good for yoga and it's also good for your normal life, outside of yoga, finding your comfortable place no matter what situation or feelings you're experiencing. And we'll slowly come forward Tap the feet for a moment, just increasing that circulation, waking up your feet. And we'll do the opposite, bringing the knees together, feet together. Again, if this is too much of a deep stretch for the top of your ankle, you can come forward and work with your weight. Or you can come back onto your fingertips and lift your knees up. For more of a challenge here, you can lift the hands and bring them to heart center. Lots of variations. Feel free to just close your eyes and see what feels best for you. It's also important to note in yoga the fine line between actual pain and just a really nice deep stretch that might feel uncomfortable. So if you're feeling any pain at all in any posture, always come out of it a little until you don't feel that pain anymore. But if it's just an uncomfortable feeling that you're not used to but it doesn't actually hurt, then try to breathe through it. A couple more moments, and you'll reap amazing benefits from these postures. 
Coming forward, we're going to meet in a tabletop pose. Hands beneath the shoulders, knees beneath the waist. If you have any tension or sensitive knees, you can place a little towel or blanket under your knees for an extra cushion. And if you have knee pain or sensitive wrists, you can bring the wrist a little bit more forward so the angle isn't directly 90 degrees um, underneath the shoulder. We're just going to circle around on the wrist. Adding weight onto our wrists, strengthening our wrist joint. Make that circle really nice and big. And going in the other direction. Back to your neutral tabletop, we're going to flip the palms over so the back of the hand is on the ground. Getting into a really nice deep wrist stretch. If this is too much for you, you can come closer to your knees and work with the weight bearing here. If it's okay, stay in your tabletop. Press into all your fingertips so your fingers aren't crunching together. And find length here. Don't collapse into the elbows, into the shoulders. The arms are straight. The back is neutral. And slowly come out of the posture. Shake out your hands. And we'll meet in a standing pose. We'll come to some head circles before we enter our salutations to heat up our body. Circle the head in one direction. Maybe go a little bit slower so you can feel the stretch on every side of your neck, every centimeter of your neck. You can close your eyes. You can even feel the stretch reaching into other areas of the body, going deeper into the shoulder, or to the top of the head, to your ears, wherever you might feel your stretch connected. And this is important also with every posture. The whole body is connected. So when we do one thing, it affects many other things. And change direction. Okay, we'll come to the top of the mat. Doing four rounds of um, moon salutations the practice of Hatha. Big toe to big toe. Make sure you're not locking the knees here. We want a little micro bend to keep the weight of your body in the center. So when we lock our knees back, then our upper body falls a bit forward to compensate. Make sure you have a nice little micro bend here, really feeling the weight of your body over your feet, over your heels. Inhale, the hands come up. Look up towards your fingertips. You should feel the stretch all the way from your toes your fingertips, feeling complete length here. Exhale, we're going to come all the way down towards the ground, coming into a forward fold. It's okay if you want to bend the knees here and work with a straight spine or straight legs, whatever feels better for you. We're going to bring the left leg all the way back and enter a low lunge here, making sure that you're not too close. We want to get nice and deep. Inhale, look up, open your throat, open that throat chakra, that whole neck, activating our hormones, igniting our hormone system. Inhale, look up. Place your hands onto the ground. Come back into a plank. Drop your knees and come back into a child's pose. Exhale. Taking a moment to rest in the middle of our cycle before we continue. So you know this posture is always here and also anyways throughout the practice. If you ever feel you need a second to rest, you can take it. It's there for you. Look forward in between your hands and we're gonna slide all the way through our hands into Cobra. 
Make sure that you keep your elbows close to your body and don't open them outwards. They should stay close to your body. All the way forward, elbows close to the body, sliding up into cobra. In cobra, we're pushing onto our hands, making sure our shoulders are away from our ears. Look up, inhale. Tuck the toes, push back into your hands, bringing the weight towards your feet into your first downward dog of the day. Let's take a moment here just to shake out our hips, warming up those hamstrings, maybe walking out the legs, whatever feels good for you right now in your downward dog. Make sure your feet are hips distance and your hands are shoulder distance. And you really want to push the weight towards your feet. Don't keep it on your hands. If you feel like your back is curving, then bend your knees a bit. Push into your hands again and find that nice long spine. It's super important to find that long spine in your downward dog, more important than the straight legs. Look forward in between your hands and we'll come out the same way we came in. Bring that left leg all the way forward. Drop your hips, inhale, look up. Exhale, big toe to big toe, forward fold, top of the mat. Inhale, rise up, fingertips. Exhale, samastitihi, rest. Let's do the other side. Inhale, hands come up, look towards your fingertips. Exhale, all the way to the ground, forward fold. Bring that right leg all the way back, drop the hips, inhale, look up. Come back to planks, drop your knees, exhale, child's pose. Look forward, slide all the way through, keeping your elbows close to your body, don't open them outwards. And inhale to cobra. Tuck the toes. Hips come up to the sky and backwards towards your heels. Exhale, downward dog. Look forward, bring that right leg all the way in between your hands. If you need some help, you can always use your hands to bring that leg a little bit more forward. Drop the hips, inhale, look up. Big toe to big toe, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, hands come up. Exhale, rest, hands to heart center, samastiti. We'll do one more on each side. Inhale, the hands up. Exhale, come down to the floor. Left leg comes all the way back, low lunge. Inhale, look up. Back to plank, hold your breath, drop your knees. Exhale, as you come back into your child's pose, hips rest on your heels. Look forward, slide all the way through, keeping the elbows nice and tight. Inhale to cobra. Tuck the toes, exhale, downward dog. Look forward, bring that left leg in between your hands. Drop your hips, inhale, look up. Big toe to big toe, exhale, head to knees. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, samastitihi rest. Last round, go as deep as you can. Really try to enter these postures very deeply. Inhale, the hands up. Feel complete length here. Exhale, all the way down. Compression into your body, head to knee. Bring that right leg all the way back, dropping the hips as much as you can. We're warm now, so your hips will have more space to drop. Inhale, look up, open that throat. Back to plank, hold the breath, drop the knees. Exhale, child's pose. Look in between your hands, sliding all the way through to cobra, elbows nice and tight towards the body. Inhale, look up, tuck the toes. Exhale, downward dog. Look forward, right leg comes in between the hands. Drop the hips, inhale, look up. Big toe to big toe, exhale, head to knees. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, 
Samastiti he rests. Let's take a moment to just open up the body, open your legs, open your hands, close your eyes, and just take this one second to feel the energy that's rushing through your body, the heat you created just from a couple cycles of postures. Breathing deeply, seeing if your deep breath can even lower your heart rate a bit. Connecting to the control of your nervous system with the use of your breath, it's a magical thing. From here we'll close the feet about five centimeters, maybe like three inches apart from each other on the inner hip width, not the outer hip. We're gonna inhale, the hands come up. Interlock the fingers and invert your hands outward. Coming into palm tree pose. Really hug the head with your arms here. Your arms should be completely active. The head is neutral and relaxed. Inhale again, we're gonna to come toward to our tippy toes. Now this is tricky. You don't have to come all the way up high so that you feel unbalanced. Find a place that's comfortable for you, that you feel like you can balance in for a long period of time, maybe even 10 minutes. I won't make you do it, but that's, that's the direction here. In your palm tree pose, make sure that your stomach isn't spilling out forward and you're coming into a back bend. Really tuck your stomach in, activate your core, hug your ribs towards the center, protect that lower back. Inhale, lengthen in those arms again. I know they're getting tired. And exhale, turn towards the right. Little upper body twist here. Staying on the tippy toes. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, turn towards the left. Inhale, back to center. And slowly drop the heels back down to the ground. Keep those hands up. Just a little bit longer of that shoulder burn. And afterwards, your shoulders and arms will feel like feathers. <laughs> Coming towards the side, the right side, into a little side bend here. Couple deep breaths. Just like we did in our seated side bend, make sure you're not collapsing with the chest towards the ground. Keeping it open towards the sky. Look beyond your left arm, upwards. Inhale, come back up. Tighten those arms again. Exhale towards the left side. Look towards the right and up. Keep those arms nice and strong. Inhale back to center. And slowly release the arms open. Beautiful. From here, We'll take the arms behind our back, coming into a forward fold with a nice deep shoulder stretch. Falling all the way forward. Release your head, your head should be relaxed. You can do yes and no with your head. So make sure that your head is actually relaxed in your neck. And let your arms just fall overhead. You can feel free to bend your knees here if you need to or want to. Or keep them straight and just let the arms fall over. Breathing deeply on every exhale, see if there's a little bit more room to just let the arms fall a little bit more. And slowly bring the hands to the ground in front of your feet in your forward fold. Take a deep breath. You're gonna inhale the right hand up towards the sky and look up towards your right hand coming into a forward fold twist. Exhale, back down towards the ground. Inhale, left hand comes up, look up towards your left hand. Exhale, back towards the ground. Do a couple more at your own pace. Feel free to use any props if you need to. Maybe you can do this on a chair or with blocks or any big books if you if it's more comfortable than coming back down towards the ground. Or you can bend the knees. It's okay to do this with bent knees as well. You can also do this with a wider stance if you need to. That makes you feel more balanced. And 
return back to center. Make the feet a little bit wider now, coming into a wide angle with your legs. And make sure your toes are more inwards than outwards, in line with the lines of your mat, possibly. So your toes are in outwards, that's what's important here. Pressing into the outside of your feet. And exhale, lower down into your wide angle fold. There's a couple variations here as well. You can always use blocks or a chair or something in front of you to make the angle less. You can bring your hands in between your feet and work on getting that direction of the head towards the ground. Or you can come into that nice shoulder stretch addition like we did in forward fold. You can choose your variation here. Take a couple deep breaths. From here, we'll walk the hands towards our right foot, coming to our leg and giving it a nice big hug. Really hugging that right leg, bringing your upper body as close as possible to the thigh, head to shin. And we'll turn our whole body towards that right leg coming into a lunge like we did in the salutations. Except now we're gonna rise up onto our knee. If your knee is sensitive, again, you can put a blanket or a towel under your left knee for extra support. If you're okay, we'll be here for a moment. Take a second to adjust your hips and do a pelvic tilt backwards so that you're not too much in the lower back. We want to protect that lower back here. So tilting the hips backwards, you should feel the stretch nice and deep in your hip flexor at the top of your left thigh. And for an extra challenge, you can inhale, lift the hands up, look towards your fingertips, coming into Anjaniyasana. That's the name in Sanskrit for this low lunge, crescent low lunge. Three deep breaths here. And exhale. Coming with your hands towards the ground, we're gonna flex in that right leg and come into a half split. If you need to widen the angle here, you can always feel free to do that or keep it right in front of you. Inhale, look forward, getting that nice long straight spine. Exhale, bring the head to knee. Coming into your half splits here. We're going to add some movement here. Walking the fingers forward. Inhale, coming into a low lunge, look up. Walking the fingers backwards, flex the right foot. Exhale, head to knee, half splits. Inhale, forward. Exhale backwards. Feel free to do this at your own pace if you prefer to move more slowly or more quickly. Or you can work at this nice average speed that I'm doing it at. Let's do one more. On our next inhale, we'll make forward in that low lunge and we'll bring both of our hands to the left side of our right foot. You can open that right foot as wide as you want, more towards the right side. We're going to enter a lizard pose here. You can relax in the back leg. You can stay on your hands here or come down onto your elbows for a deeper lizard pose stretch. Taking three deep breaths. And we'll slowly lift up back on our back toes and our left foot. And enter that wide angle again that we started in. Taking a moment in the center here. And then switching towards the left side. Before we enter our lunge, we're going to hug that left leg again. 
taking a couple deep breaths, really trying to pull that upper body towards that left leg. And then slowly turning towards the left side now. Knee comes back down to the ground. If you need the support, you can add it now under your knee. And slowly come up, hands onto your thigh, your left thigh. Again, tilting the hips backwards to protect that lower back and really enter the hip flexor here at the top of your right thigh. Feel free to stay here with the hand on the thigh or inhale, the hands come up, look up towards your hands, press into your feet, holding that nice balance in this low lunge. Last deep breath here. And exhale, come back down towards the ground, lean back and straighten that left leg, flex the foot. Inhale, look forward, long spine. Exhale, head to knee. You can feel free to work here with a straight spine as well. Or curling all the way down. One more deep breath here before we add a little bit of movement. Inhale, walk the fingers forward. We're walking on the tops of our fingertips, working on the strengths of our fingertips as well. Inhale, look up, low lunge. Walk the fingers back. Exhale, half splint. Inhale, forward. Exhale, backwards. Couple more at your own pace. One more. And we'll inhale, meeting in that low lunge. Exhale, bring the hands towards the right side now of your left foot and feel free to open that left leg a little bit wider. Again, you can stay here on your hands or lower down onto your elbows, depending on how deep you want to get into your lizard pose. The back leg is relaxed. Three deep breaths. And we'll slowly lift up back onto our back toes. Lift our hips up. Walk our hands back to center and enter that wide angle again. Inhale, we're going to rise up with our hands straight back. Exhale, hands to heart center. This time we're going to widen the toes outwards and squat down halfway coming into goddess pose. Now make sure your toes are in line with your knees and that your knees aren't dropping inward. Super important for this posture. You can also keep your hands on your knees if that helps you to feel more stable or keep the hands at heart center. Again, we don't want to enter the lower back here and let the belly spill forward. Hip tilt towards the back, the posterior tilt, protecting the lower back. Inhale, the hands up. Look up towards your fingertips. Exhale, we're going to bend the elbows and open the hands outwards into cactus hands, 90 degrees outwards from the body, both of the arms. We're also gonna pull them backwards so that we feel like our shoulder blades are touching. Inhale the hands up. Exhale, cactus hands. Inhale up. Exhale, cactus hands. Inhale up. Exhale. Couple more. One more. And hold that cactus hands for a moment. 
opening the heart forward, feeling your shoulder blades touch, maybe dropping a little bit lower into your goddess pose, feeling the burn in your thighs here just for one more moment. And exhale, drop your hands back down towards the ground. We're gonna close the feet half distance so that it's a little bit wider than hip distance. And we're gonna sit down in a yogi squat. In our yogi squat, we wanna make sure that our toes and knees are in the same line, just like we did in goddess pose. You can keep your hands on the ground if you need to feel more stable, or you can place books or blocks under your heels if your heels aren't touching the floor yet. Bringing our hands to heart center and elbows in between our knees. Use this contra here, this contra pressure of your elbows and your knees to open your heart even more and find even more length in the spine. This is a great pose to work on your posture. And also make sure that you're pressing into your feet. Sometimes the toes like to lift up in this pose and you'll lose your balance. So press and ground into your feet. Feel rooted in your yogi pose while still finding length here. right hand down towards the ground on the inside of our right knee and lift that left hand up towards the sky look towards your left hand coming into a nice yogi squat twist three deep breaths here come back to center inhale hands to heart center exhale switch sides left hand onto the ground on the inside of your left knee Right hand comes up and behind you, look towards that right hand. And drop the hand down towards the ground. Inhale, hands to right center. Exhale, release the hands down towards the ground and enter a tabletop pose. Just like we started with in our warm up, hands beneath the shoulders, knees beneath the hips. You're gonna enter a quadruplex ab and back strengthener. Finding your neutral spine here, making sure you're not sinking with the belly down or arching too high, high up with the uh, spine towards the sky. Really neutral tabletop here, right in the center. Inhale, we're gonna lift the right hand up. And exhale down. Inhale, left hand up. Exhale down. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale down. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale down. Take a moment in your tabletop to just Think about what just happened, if any side was more difficult for you, any limb, if you felt like your spine was moving or if you kept it nice and neutral the whole time. We'll do it again, doing opposite direction. Inhale the left hand up, exhale down. Keep that spine nice and neutral. Inhale right hand up, exhale down. Inhale, right leg up, exhale down. Inhale, left leg up, exhale down. And now we'll do opposite limbs. Inhale, the right hand and the left leg up. And hold for a moment here, really trying to keep that belly neutral. Doing a posterior tilt in the hips like we did in our other postures to make sure we're protecting the lower back activating the core. That means the leg won't come up as high. If it's coming up super high, that probably means that your belly is dropping and you're doing a back bend. So lower the leg, activate that core, and exhale, drop. Beautiful, we'll do the other side. Inhale, left hand and right leg. Up. Again, checking your body to see if your belly is dropping and your leg is rising too high up. 
Lower it down, activate that belly, tilt the hips backwards. Strong spine, strong belly here. And exhale, come back down to center. We'll do that one more time. Inhale, right hand and left leg. As if someone's pulling your hand and your leg apart from each other, you should feel length here. Exhale, back down. Inhale, opposite side, left hand, right leg. Strong belly, neutral spine. Exhale, back down. Can you come into supportive plank here? Leaning towards the left hand, we're gonna twist our body outwards, bringing that right leg out into a stand. You can use your left leg as a support into this nice side plank stretch. Or for an extra challenge, you can press into your right leg and lift that left leg or match it to bring the legs together, coming into an active side plank. It's up to you what you choose to do. Three breaths in whatever variation you chose. Look up towards your right hand. Coming back to center, we'll switch sides. In your tabletop pose, leaning towards the right hand, opening the body towards the left, bringing that left leg back out and straight. Left hand towards the sky, you can look up towards your left hand. Choose what you want to do with that right leg, either keep it as a stand uh, to support your plank, or lift it up and match the other leg, bring them together to enter a nice active side plank. Slowly meeting each other in tabletop pose. We're gonna open the knees up to about the max distance, the max width, and come back into a wide angle child's pose. Dropping the chest to the ground. You can rest on your chin or your forehead or at the side of your face, whatever is most comfortable for you. You can also keep the hands forward or bring them backwards by your side, maybe holding your legs. Just taking a couple deep breaths here in child's pose, releasing any tension and strain from the back, working on circulation in the knees, opening the shoulders if your hands are forward. You feel each breath in between your thighs, the belly inflating and deflating. Feeling that sensation of your breath connected to your body. If your head is to the side, then switch sides. If it's in the center, you can stay in the center. For a couple more deep breaths in your child's pose. And slowly lift back up onto your fingertips, cross your legs underneath you, and we'll come to our back for some nice yummy back postures, reclined postures. Straightening the legs for a moment just to feel the whole body on the floor. Take a deep breath. And we'll bring the right leg towards us with the knee bent. Hugging the knee for a moment towards our body, really tightly feeling compression here in the hip. Massaging the abdominal organs on the right side of your uh, stomach. You can do some ankle circles to the right. Also working on circulation and mobility in the joint as well. And circling towards the left. Maybe writing your first name with your foot. And 
Then we'll straighten the leg. You can hold the leg either behind the thigh, behind the shin, or at the toes, depending on your flexibility. And try to keep that leg nice and straight as much as you can. If you need to bend, you can. But while you're bending, try straightening as much as you can while you're breathing deeply. You're gonna take a couple deep breaths here in this nice extended pose. Put your left hand on your left hip to make sure that your hip is grounded and not lifting or moving to any direction. From here, we'll take our right hand towards the inside of our, of our right leg, either by the shin or the thigh or the foot. And we'll open that right leg up towards the right side. Still keeping our left hand on our left hip, making sure that hip isn't lifting, that the leg is grounded. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, switch hand, make, bring your, your left hand up and grab your right leg on the outside of your right leg. And we're going to enter a twist here with our straight leg, bringing that left, that right leg all the way down towards the ground, coming into a reclined twist with a straight leg, so we can also add a little bit of hamstring stretch, why not? Bring that right hand up towards the side, look up, look towards your right hand. And take a couple nice deep breaths here in this twist. Inhale, lift the leg up, back to center. Exhale, knee to chest, and switch legs. Adjusting your body as needed if you need to straighten out again on your mat. Lifting the left knee up towards your chest, and squeezing the leg towards you, hugging that knee towards your chest, feeling this nice compression in the left hip now. Massaging the abdominal organs on the left side. Circling the left angle, ankle towards the left. Towards the right. And writing your last name with your foot. And we'll slowly straighten out the leg. Again, you can hold the thigh, the back of the shin, or the foot, wherever you want to. You can also not hold it all, if that's more comfortable. Depending on what you're wanting to work on today, if you want a more active practice or a more passive practice. Grabbing wherever you're grabbing. Take your right hand towards your right hip, making sure that that's nice and grounded on the floor. Deep breaths here. Use your breath as a tool. Every inhale, finding more length. Every exhale, coming an extra centimeter, going a little bit deeper into your posture. The body allows it. The body makes space whenever we breathe deeply. When you focus on those deep exhales, the body says, I'm relaxed. I'm not in alarm, I'm not in alert mode. I'm not in pain, so I'll allow more space for my muscles to stretch. So really breathe deeply in your postures if you're looking to go more deeply into them. Slowly we're gonna bring that right, that left leg towards the left side. Making sure that our right hip is still grounded on the floor. Inhale the leg back to center. Exhale, switch hands, bring that, that right hand up, grabbing the left 
side, the outside of your left leg, either shin, thigh, or foot. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fall towards the right side with your leg, landing on the ground, keeping that leg nice and straight for that added hamstring stretch in our twist. Bring that left hand out at shoulder height and look towards your left hand. Deep breaths here, releasing any tension from the back. Slowly coming back to center. Inhale. Exhale, drop the leg down towards the ground. Let's take a breath here for a moment before we enter our last postures, which will be inversions. Bring your feet um, onto the ground, bending your knees. Make sure your feet are close enough to your body that you can touch your ankles. You don't have to grab them, but just lightly brushing the back of them. Your feet are facing forward and are parallel to each other. Make sure your feet aren't open or closed. And also your legs are hips distance apart. Make sure your legs aren't closed or too open. Placing the hands by your hips, we're gonna inhale into a bridge pose. Lifting the hips up as high as you can. Pressing into your feet, that's super key here. Make sure you're really pressing into your feet. It will help release any tension from the lower back. So if you feel any pain or strain in the lower back, you can lower down a bit more. If not, we'll press and raise. Maybe you can grab your hands underneath and roll your shoulders a little bit more under to go even higher into your bridge. Make sure your knees are still facing forward and haven't opened because sometimes that happens without realizing. We'll take a couple deep breaths here in our bridge pose. It's super important and highly recommended to do at least five minutes of inversions every day if you can. An inversion is any pose where your heart is above your head, so it can be like this in bridge, a shoulder stand, a downward dog, a forward fold, anything where we're reversing the circulation in our body towards our head and reversing the effects of gravity, which is always weighted on our feet. And slowly lower down, vertebrae by vertebrae. And speaking of shoulder stands, this will be our last posture, well, active posture. <laughs> We're going to bring the legs to 90 degrees and slowly bring them towards your face until you can place your hands onto your lower back, lifting the legs up. Super important here not to move your head. And again, if you don't feel comfortable coming up into a shoulder stand right now, you can enter a low bridge again like we just did, the same posture or just rest for a moment and we'll meet you in a second. If we're here in shoulder stand with me, then make sure your feet are really tight together, pressing against each other. The whole body should be active here. Breathing deeply, feeling your abs help you stabilize. One more deep breath. And slowly lower down, vertebrae by vertebrae using that nice core strength. Once you get to your 90 degrees again, lower the knees towards your chest and hug your knees for a moment, bringing your head up towards your knees, holding elbows, really full complexion, full compression of the body. Breathing deeply, then release the head back down towards the ground. Head, hands out by your shoulders and keep the knees together. You're gonna enter some circles here, drawing circles on the roof, massaging the lower back, giving yourself some nice TLC to your lower back region. 
The circle can be as big as you want, whatever feels comfortable for you. And circling in the other direction. And from here we'll enter our Shavasana. Opening the legs as wide as your mat or maybe a bit wider. The hands will come by the hips. Palms facing up. Take your shoulders away from your ears and place them back down on the ground, making sure we're relaxed in the shoulders. Tuck the chin a little bit closer in the direction of your chest to feel your neck a little bit more aligned on the ground. And that's it. If you need any props in your Shavasana, you can place pillows anywhere to feel more comfortable. And just breathe deeply here, focusing on your breath, thinking about your breath the flow of it through your nose, all the way down to your stomach, and the same back out. Really just thinking about the movement of your breath, your belly rising and falling. Taking a couple moments here in Shavasana, the corpse pose. This pose is essential to every yoga practice, making sure you take this couple of moments to yourself to feel completely present in your body, to give your body this moment and this time to heal itself, to relax properly, to connect with earth, with your ground beneath you. All these amazing benefits. It can be also an extremely difficult pose if it's hard for you to keep still for a couple moments. Super common. <laughs> so just fight that urge to move, to adjust, to open your eyes. All those anxious feelings, just let them melt away and just completely release and give in to this Shavasana pose. Thank you.